here today with the new rug carving scissors. I'm sure you've seen these around. I've done a couple of reposts about them, but now I'm actually going to show you how to use them. Um, just so you know, mine are a bit dirty. I mean, they don't come looking fantastically brand new because obviously there's um, oil on the blades and again, it's an industrial tool just like the tufting guns, um, but they work absolutely fantastic. So. I just want to show you, I'm going to do it on a couple of different options, like on acrylic that has no um, <clears throat> glue on the back, and then I'm also going to move to wool, and I will also show you a couple different types of wool and how they cut that. Um, they aren't meant to be dug in super deep. If you are on an uneven surface, you actually can break the tips of the scissors if you are kind of aggressive and You've got a bunch of curves on the surface, um, so you want it nice and flat, and to be really gentle with the scissors until you get used to them and kind of know what it can take and what it can't. All right, so let's um, switch to the other camera, and I will show you how to use it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so here I am with a um, freshly tufted acrylic. Some of this is very densely tufted here. And this is like less dense over here. Um, if we want to just quickly see the other side. Uh, it's not glued. Um, you can see two strands were used, uh, but it's quite, uh, uh, these lines are quite far apart. And if we look here, kind of, this is definitely a lot denser here. Um, again, two strands were used. And this is acrylic yarn. So I'm just going to show you how to start the tool. So you just press this red button here, make sure it's plugged in, and you can adjust the speed. So it can actually just shut off if it's almost at the lowest speed. So if you get it and you're like, what the, make sure this is turned up. I like it kind of at a mid-speed, um, if you get confident you can go higher. Let's start at a mid-speed. Um, so you want, you'll see how there's one blade that's moving and there's one blade that's not. So you want the blade that's stationary to be on the bottom and then you're going to carve into your piece like this. So let's just take a look. So say I just do a first pass. You can see it's just taking just a tiny bit of yarn off. It's not like digging into it and taking huge chunks, just a little bit. And so if I turn this off, and because this is um, very densely tufted, you can see it's already made a really nice groove right there. Um, but if you kind of play around with it, it disappears quite quickly because you haven't actually done too much carving yet. So you need to do a few passes in order to get a line like say this one here. So let's try again. So this is how I would actually carve out a line. Go straight first, tip the scissors just a little bit that way, pull again, tip them just a little bit this way. And there we go. There we go. So you can see you can go from just doing a like a cleaning up of the line to actually carving um, a little bit of a groove. Um, so let's try it on like the less densely populated um, stuff because it's less noticeable as the more apart. Um, the yarn is. So even if I like went here where there's like hardly anything, see it really doesn't do much. And if I turn it, it does start to kind of cut. Um, but it's really just a trimmer. It's not like scissors. So, and you see how if I actually want it to trim, I've got to like hold it quite slowly. See? 
just little, little amounts are coming off. It's not meant to actually like cut your yarn like a scissor. Okay, so let's um, do some work in here. It's also going to depend, if you go like with your tufted lines, it's going to be a little bit different than if you go against your tufted lines as well. If you go with your tufted lines, you're not going to see very much happening because you're not hitting that much yarn. But if you go against it, you can definitely dig out a little bit more. And you notice I'm not, I'm definitely not going right to the fabric. So I'm not leaning it against the table like that and cutting my fabric. I'm just leaning it just on the surface just on the surface and then I'll go deeper if I want to create a deeper line okay it's it, the tool takes some takes time it's not like super super fast but it you have so much control and you can do so many little tiny details which I just love like you can actually even go in a a teeny tiny circle if you wanted to, like little curves. And there aren't very many tools that allow for this much control just at the tips, you know? So that's on acrylic yarn and there's the tool so um, now we're going to uh, work on some wool so I can show you what it looks like um, when carving on wool okay so here I am with a really dense wool rug that I have um, shaved down using the CPI rug carver, which is actually quite tricky to use. <laughs> we'll go over that a different day. Um, and unfortunately I've done a lot of carving on this already, but I'll try and just show you on a small area. This is where I've already created a line. Um, so we'll try an area where I haven't done the best line, like right here. And or actually, I should probably pick something that's a little bit closer to where you guys are. We'll go right along there. Oops. I'm putting my machine. Okay. Let's do this. So, I've got it pretty much on the same speed I did before. I'm just going to... Unfortunately, uh, I don't think I've very much left on this deck to show you too well. So you can see on um, wool, it creates a groove a lot faster than oops, than on the acrylic. It's it digs in um, quite well, and that's just because wool. Um, is a lot stronger and um, this back of this is also glued so uh, acrylic yarn can be quite slippery and actually when it, the scissors grab it it can kind of almost like pull at it whereas you'll find on wool it just slips through the wool like so nicely I mean it's one of the reasons why tufting with wool is just so nice because all the tools just work so much better with wool you can see creates a groove like right away. Gorgeous. But um, this is wool that has been shaved down quite a bit. So yeah, um, I'll show you one other type of yarn with the scissors and then I think that will be our tutorial.
Okay, so this is a piece that I've done with my AK3 and a really thick wool yarn. Um, and I'm just going to show you how it looks when it goes through something like this. Oops, again, I've unplugged it. Jeez. Okay. Get that in. Okay. So. I'm just kind of wiggling the scissors a bit as I'm going just to try and get on the right side of the tapes of yarn. Um, there we go. Okay. But again, you can see that once you fluff it, when it's really dense like this, like you can't you don't see all that much that's happened, but you have like tidied the line up quite a bit. So it's almost like you're trying to get in between your one type of yarn and your others and just sort of trim out that little bit so that you can get a nice definition. That is unless you want that carved V look, in which case you need to sort of tilt the scissors back and forth in order to get that. Okay guys, so I uh, just was finishing the overtop video of me using this tool and I realized there was a couple things I forgot. You definitely want to make sure that you're oiling this machine regularly and you're just going to want to oil it right in between the blades. So just in this, it's probably the easiest way, in this area right here, um, just to keep it all moving well and from overheating. I definitely, I will tell you that this part of the machine does heat up if you're using it for a long period of time, but that's, that's normal, that's not anything to be worried about. Most machines, the motors do heat up over like a time of using it. So that's completely normal. Okay, we'll move on to... Alright, so the last thing is, if you um, do end up breaking a blade, you can easily... Um, replace them by just getting a flathead screwdriver. I never know which they're actually called the Phillips or whatever. Um, and you're going to just unscrew the screws holding it in place. Try to remember which screw goes where because if you look on the other side you can see how it's been carved so that it's nice and flat. So you want to try and get the same screws back in the same holes so that they're nice and flat. So definitely make sure you have the right size screwdriver too because you don't want to rip these screws um, and then have to replace them and then grind that side down because um, that's not a tool that most of us have to, to work with. So just unscrew, unscrew a bit finicky. Okay, so that is screw top screw. Excuse me, I have a little bit of a sniffle still. Um, oh gosh, there's quite a bit of yarn stuck around that screw. Just because I've used these quite a bit. Um, okay, so that's the bottom screw. I'm going to put it over there. So you can see I've gotten it off now. This will just wiggle out. And you just want to make sure that the blade you put in is going the same direction. So, um, see that's the blade to put in, you can see the sharp side, again it's like that, just a fresh blade, put that in there, quite greasy and gooby, and if I was going to actually replace this then I would just 
screw in the screws, the top one and the bottom one, and I would be good to go. Um, I don't need to use this, so I'm going to keep it for other people who may need it and just put on the old screw or the old piece again because it's obviously not broken. Oops, <laughs> I just said top screw and bottom screw and I was going to prick that up. Okay. Here we go. It is not about fidgety. There we go. Top screw is in. And um, my biggest thing in all my videos when I talk about machines is make sure that you have tightened it as tight as humanly possible. Because the last thing you want when you're using a tool is to have bits fly off while you're using it. That is very dangerous. So just make sure they're nice and snug. And there you go. So you can see on this top one, there's a little bit of a difference here. This one's got a little nut around it. So you're gonna have to um, unscrew that nut as well as unscrewing that um, screw there, or like, you know, have something on either side so that you can get that blade off. But remember, that so that is the moving blade, which is why it's got that extra security on it, just to keep it nice and tight. You also have this piece, which is actually keeping the scissors pushed together. Um, it's sitting on there as well, so I think that's part of the reason it's there. So if for some reason your scissors um, aren't cutting very well, it could be because this needs to be tightened. Um, just to push the scissors nice and close together so that they are cutting, um, like they're, uh, the blades are right on top of each other. Um, yeah, that's about all I can think of at this point, so good luck and enjoy.